did. Don, would you pray for our friend today? Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the chance to meet together. We're thankful, Lord, for the blessings that we've seen during the past season. We ask, Lord, that you would just be with us today and help us to remember that you are here and you're, you know, the Holy Spirit is working within our lives. Bless us all, Lord, for your purposes. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
today. Uh, did you get any new clothes for Christmas? I got boots. <laughs> Cowboy boots. Had, I'm from Texas, and I hadn't had my boots. I, hadn't, I wore out the boots that I had. I hadn't had them in several years. And my folks, my parents, said, you know, now that you're closer to us, you're back in the central time zone, you probably need some boots. <laughs> Sounds like I always need some boots. But uh, I didn't wear them today, though, but maybe someday you'll see me. Okay, anyway. uh, but the title of the message today is New Wardrobe for, for a New Year. And, and the good news about that is, uh, no matter what you wear externally, uh, there is a wardrobe that God has in store for every single one of us who will come to Him. And I like this for lots of reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is, um, when you change clothes, <clears throat> you're, you're still the same person you are. They say, the old advertisements for suits say, clothes make the man, or whatever, clothes make the person. Uh, that's not always true. Uh, but, but after that, you, you feel a little different when you have different kinds of clothes on, right? I mean, it, it, there's a different feeling that, that you have. I, for instance, I coached baseball. I coached baseball for about seven years. Uh, and when the, the little kids show up to practice, they're all excited and uh, get, getting ready. And I do warm-ups and stretching and all this kind of stuff and get them ready to, to take the field. But the first question I get you can probably imagine from the from the little guys is what? When do we get our uniforms? Because everybody knows you're not really playing baseball <laughs> until you got the uniform. And what's funny is when uniforms do finally come in, and I have that great, you know, and I and it's it's a great I mean it's usually the best practice, by the way, for the little guys, because I tell them, look, guys. <laughs> I want you to really focus today because uniforms are in. <laughs> and if we can't, if we can get everything done in time, I can give you your uniforms today. Best practice I ever had. <laughs> they are so focused. They look like pros there for about an hour. It's like, boom, boom, everything's fine. Coach, what do we do next? Where do we go? We're ready to go. And, and we get the uniform. And they're so excited about the uniforms, by the way. <clears throat> that I have to remind them uniforms are for the game. Because <laughs> they'll show, if I don't, I'm not making fun. I mean, I'm, I remember my uniform. I love it. Uh, but if I don't tell many of them, they will show up to every practice in the uniform. And I do that really for the moms, uh, you know, and the dads or whoever washes clothes in their house because, you know, I mean, they would wear them to every practice. And I have to tell some of them, remember, don't wear these to school. Because they would wear them. They're so excited about the uniform, man. The number, they all know what number they want. I want to be number eight because blah, 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 it's number eight. All right, well, we only have one number eight, so arm wrestle for it or do something. I mean, whatever. I don't do that. I don't make them arm wrestle. But anyway, uh, there's something about the uniform, right, that, that changes things. And, and after they get them, and when they take the field the first time in those crisp, new, clean, maybe it's the only time this season they're all going to be clean, uniform, there's something sort of mystical, if I can use that term, that happens on the baseball field for that game. Well, here's the deal. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, something like this, verse 12, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, here's the deal, here it is, don't miss it, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if, you have, if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, still more clothing language here, put on love, which binds all of them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ 
dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. I got news for you. Somebody is always trying to dress you. That sounds a little weird, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's true. Somebody's always trying to dress you. And I'm not just talking about, you know, your spouse. I'm not, you know, like, my, uh, there's a, 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 an elderly gentleman in our first pastor. He just passed away recently. Uh, but uh, his wife was a longtime treasurer there. And he, for years, did all the maintenance work around this church in North Dallas. And... Uh, had a stroke, pretty severe stroke. So that at the end, but his wife had learned from him over the years how to do all the maintenance stuff. So she became the maintenance person from the church. I mean, in her late seventies, she built, fixed stuff better than I did. And because he had sort of, he would show her how to do these things. And then when he had a stroke, she just said, oh, "I'll just do." It. I mean, we had other folks too, but she was in charge. I mean, these big old burly guys would show up to fix a leak or something, and she would be like, you go over there and you put that there. I mean, she was the contractor, brother. And bless us, and, 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 and his name was Bill, and, and Bill would watch her do this, and he would be so proud. He would tear up, and he would be a little sad, too, because, you know, he used to do all this, and he just was unable to move this quickly and to do these things. But he was so proud of his wife. And uh, I got accustomed, my wife and I got accustomed to him just bragging on her all the time. Pastor, she fixed that. She fixed that by herself. Pastor, she, she repainted that by herself. She's amazing. She's amazing. But one morning, Bill looked a little surly when he came in, which is so uncommon for Bill. Bill was the most kind, just always smiles, always had something nice to say. He came and looked a little surly. I said, Bill, you look, you look a little tired. Are you doing okay? He goes, my wife. And I was ready for him to brag on her again because that's all he did. Good man, right? Good man. And he went, you know, before we were married, I dressed well enough to get her. <laughs> But he said, Pastor, apparently, apparently I can't dress myself anymore. <laughs>